If there's something I love doing, it's comparing things. Whether we're comparing the Focus ST versus the Volkswagen GTI, whether we're comparing expensive wheels to cheap wheels, or whether you're comparing me to Linus Tech Tips, even though we look nothing alike. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram. On today's episode of Opposite Lanes, we are gonna be comparing coilovers on a Mazda Miata versus air suspension on our very own Fitment Industries E30. <laughs> Alrighty then, oh my goodness gracious, getting in this car is and will always be an exercise. This is, oh my goodness gracious, why is this going up that way? Oof, that's a little uncomfortable, oh I'm sorry. This is Carissa's Mazda Miata. More specifically, this is a Mazda Miata, oh my god, more harnesses. There's a lot of work for like 106 horsepower. Mazda Miata on Fortunato coilovers. Look at that, it starts up like a dream. Let's figure out this this now. What is this, built for a child? Well, I hope we're ready to go because I won't be able to move after, oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. The good news is, is if I crash, I am going nowhere. So one of the things about having a Miata, most specifically a 1996 Mazda Miata and pretty much all early NA and NV Miatas is that there's literally no space. There's no space for anything. Having a coffee cup in here just severely takes away any surface area that you can use for pretty much anything else. And with Maxwell being in here, I can smell exactly what he smells like. So this is a 1996 Mazda Miata. This is on clutch SL2s, Federal tires, and of course, uh, we're looking at Fortune Series 500 coils. When we start comparing coilovers versus air suspension, there's a couple pros and there's a couple cons to both. And really what it ends up being is down to personal preference. But what people don't remember about air suspension and coilovers is that the cons can be pretty substantial if you aren't doing your research beforehand. So the number one pro about having coilovers, we're rubbing all over the place, is the fact that they're just easier than air suspension. Coilovers have been and will be and will probably continue to be for a while much easier than air suspension. And the reason for that is, is that they've just been around longer. It's the equivalent of having something that was on, I don't know, lowering springs of the early 2000s. They're easy to swap out, they're easy to install, for the most part, if you don't have to weld anything. And they're way more available. Like you can get coilovers from just about anywhere. Now specifically with Fortunato and the 500 series, these are rebuildable, which means you can take them and you can build them up over time. You can dial in what you need to. You can change your spring rate, you can change your oil, you can change all of that stuff. You can actually send a lot of that stuff into Fortunato. They will get it changed for you and send your, your own coilovers back. So these coilovers specifically are built for a long-term ownership. They're meant to be with you for a long time. And they're specifically meant to be used on the track or autocross and things like that where you can really experience what the purpose of having coilovers is. Another thing to remember is that coilovers are inherently, I mean, usually, usually, more affordable. They're cheaper. They're, they're, they're better on the old pocketbook when you compare it to air suspension because air suspension is expensive when you look at it. Even some of the more affordable options are still running you $22, $25 to $2,800. And even the more affordable ones are not going to be that good. There are a lot of manual based pressure systems and they require you to just flip a toggle back and forth and that's pretty much all you can do. Now, don't mistake air suspension for air cups. That's completely different. Fortunato has air cups and things like that, but that's not the same as having a full air suspension kit. So besides the fact that they're more affordable, they're usually a little bit easier, they're more reliable because you don't have to deal with all the lines and all of that sort of stuff. It's just kind of like the go-to option, especially if you're jumping into, there's two double yellows. What am I supposed to do? Look, Max, what am I supposed to do when there's two double yellows? Huh? What does that even mean? 
What does that mean when there's two double yellows? Like, mm, don't pass it unless you're gonna, and then you have to stay there. Very confusing times here in Wisconsin. The pandemic has not been the same. Anyway, so besides that, you have the simplicity of all that. And then of course you have the old static gang. One of the biggest things that you can do with coilovers, you can dial in your fitment, you can dial it in super strong, and then you keep it there. One of the biggest cons of having air suspension is how funky your setup can look when you're rolling down the road. And if you've ever seen it before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It looks like the car goes on pogo sticks when it's up in the air. And the reason that sometimes that happens is because people will run an extremely aggressive wheel setup on a car that probably can't fit it. They camber the thing to kingdom come. And then what happens is, is once it lifts up, the, the tires flatten up, they get less cambered. And then what happens is, is because they come out poking, they're further out in the wheel, or they're further out in the wheel well, and then it just looks really bunk. It just looks dumb. It looks silly. It looks real silly. Goofy. Yo, goofy, okay? You don't want to have goofy fitment. This is not goofy fitment when you got static suspension, because what you can do is you can dial it all in, specifically to how you drive. It's simpler, it's easier, it's more affordable, generally speaking. It's more accessible. There's way more you can do. You get Fortunato, something like this. You can dial it in, you can break them, you can rebuild them, you can send them in. And just the, the opportunity to use something that's a little bit easier is super worth it in coilovers. Coilovers are awesome. There's nothing really wrong with coilovers. The only thing that would be a kind of coilovers is occasionally you're gonna bust your knuckle when you're trying to adjust your threads. Another con when you're running coilovers is sometimes people buy coils and they don't actually use them for their intended purpose. They just want the car to be lower and then they smack their threaded collars as low as they possibly can and next thing you know, their car is feeling very, uh, whoop, feeling very, well, loosey-goosey. You don't want to feel loosey-goosey with your coilovers. Coilovers do require a little bit of knowledge to dial in, which can sometimes be a con. And finally, on top of that, one of the last cons that you can have with coilovers is that coilovers are also static. So changing them around requires more work. It's more difficult than air suspension, where air suspension is just at a click of a button. But you are paying for that click. Every single click, you're paying, you know, maybe like 30, 40 bucks. It's kind of like when my cat ate a bunch of hair bands. Ate 14 hair bands. It was a $3,800 procedure. Pancakes, if you're watching this, every single time I hold you, that's a $20 hold. I'm counting, I'm counting. Now we're gonna get in the good old dirty 30 and see what it's like living life in luxury. Look at this, it means just, oh yeah. Oh, oh gosh, oh yeah. This is the life. You know, the thing with our E30, besides the fact that it has not been easy to keep alive, work on, it's kind of like a child that just constantly gets in locations where you think, this is the end. This is a car that does that. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. We thought that we were gonna need to jump it because <laughs> this car hasn't been on in a while. And then we got it from the shop because it was finally time to get it out there into the open road. And what do we find out? We find out that uh, the air suspension needs to recalibrate. Apparently it lost its memory. So then everything needs to be redone. The car was randomly airing out on the way to the house, which means obviously we had to stop and reset. But we're here, we're ready to film. It only took us an extra hour to make sure that the car would actually do what it's supposed to do. And even now, we're a little concerned. If we don't make it, Max, we just don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I love this car. If you guys didn't ever watch our build series on this E30, you need to. We'll put we'll put a link or whatever. We'll we'll we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you know. We'll we'll have our guys call your guys. So, let's talk about the pros of air suspension before we dive into the negatives that air suspension can provide. Pretty much anyone that has patience for a car that will constantly break. One of the biggest pros with air suspension is just the amount of versatility that you have. Like the ability. Sound like a damn BM Civic. <laughs> 
up in here. Just kidding. Don't say that. Cut that out. We do sound a little ricey, but that's okay. <laughs> one of the biggest versatilities with air suspension, one of the biggest pros about it is that you can go up, you can go down, you can do anything that you want. That, that dynamicness of having air suspension is huge, and it's a ton of fun. When you have that dynamic ability, when you can change stuff around real time, when you can move things and essentially like change the look of your car with some buttons and a couple numbers, it really is fun. And what it allows you to do is it allows you options to more fitment options. It allows you to do different stuff with the car that you wouldn't inherently be able to do with only coilovers. Now there's a bunch of static people out there in the world that enjoy living life on legendary mode and they enjoy making it difficult to drive their car. And there's definitely a time and a place for that. But there are a lot of people that don't. There's a lot of people that don't want to smash the bottom of their car every four seconds that causes their oil pan to crack on the highway and next thing you know there's oil all over 41 and you're stuck on the side of the road. Not everybody wants to deal with that and when you don't want to deal with that but you still want to have the ability to be low and have the ability to drive and not have to worry about cracking anything, air suspension is the way to go. Air suspension is also more popular on the cars that need it. To have that lift when you need it is super important. Now a lot of OEM performance cars come with lifts in the front and all that sort of stuff, but just having it in a normal car that you're trying to daily, that is also maybe your summer show car or an autocross car, this, is, this allows you to do that. One of the biggest, I think, misconceptions about air suspension, probably a pro for coilovers, is that air suspension sometimes gets a bad rap for lack of performance. And that can be argued pretty much both ways. Can you track a car on air suspension? And the answer is yes. Is it harder to dial in? Also yes. But that doesn't mean that it's incapable. It just means it requires maybe a little bit more fine tuning and dialing in takes a little bit longer and getting everything kind of figured out is just a little bit tougher. That's why people love coilovers. Coilovers are easy because it's super simple to dial in your suspension, at least to like the top 90% of where you want it all to go. The, the, the rest 10% is all about how do you dial in the last fine tuning and the, and the damper and the, all of that stuff. But with air suspension, it's just a little bit, just a little bit tougher. Now this is our beautiful and beloved BMW 318i. It's got air suspension, AccuAir management, it's got an old dude staring at us, Motegi forged two-piece wheels, and of course, some Michelin tires on it. I love this car, this car's been awesome, it's super fun, but it's not without its drawbacks either. And air suspension still does have a couple two-tree drawbacks that you should know about if you're comparing which one to get. I'm not yelling, the car is just very loud. One of the biggest cons that you have to remember with air suspension, here's the double yellow. Which way am I supposed to go? I don't know which way I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to do? Do I go over here? Do I go over there? I don't know. This is all the way down, baby. No lift shift. Woo! Sorry, I got really excited now the check engine light's on. Uh, <laughs> One of the biggest cons with air suspension is that there's just more to it. There's more things that go wrong. There's more lines, there's more management. The battery goes out and you gotta deal with all of that stuff all over again. Air suspension is just not as easy as coilovers are. You hop in a car that has coilovers, you turn the car on, you go, right? In this car, not always. You're gonna wanna turn it on. You're gonna wanna make sure that the battery died. You check it out, make sure everything's good. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on your fitment if something like that happens. In, our, in the 430 that we built, you, you have to wait for the tank to fill up and then you air it up, you gotta wait for it to fill up a little bit more, then you air it up a little bit more. And, and there's just more to it. Now that's not to say that you can't live around it, but as the sophistication of air suspension increases, the things that can go wrong increase with it. It's kind of like all the tech in all the cars. Like, is it super cool that an E55 AMG came with active bolstering in their seats that essentially hugged you when it realized that you were going faster or going around turns at a more accelerated rate in sport mode? Is that cool? Yes. Was it terrible when you realized that that caused a drain on your battery because Mercedes could not figure out how to make it not drain and then your car was randomly dead on the side of the road literally every 3,000 miles? Yes, 
There's another con to this, and that is, unfortunately, the price. Air suspension still is more expensive than most coilover setups. It still is a little bit more difficult to set up. And there's a lot of people out there that will say, oh, it just takes a day. You can do it. It's super easy. I will we'll do it in our garage. It'll take one day. And that's all true. You, you can. But to dial it in, to get it done right, to run the lines the proper way, to tuck everything correctly, to make sure that your wiring is done safely and the right way, it does take more. Coilovers are just an easier way to go about a performance thing that's gonna allow you to make your car look good, but unfortunately it's static. It's not gonna change around too much. Air suspension is the cool boy club that allows you to go up and down and left and right and everything that you could possibly want, but you're sacrificing potential reliability. And you're also paying a lot more. But just like the C30, it doesn't matter how many times it breaks my heart, just like air suspension. I love it. When it comes down to air suspension or coilovers, the options are really like limitless, but also not really, because it comes down to your driving behavior. There are people that run air suspension that absolutely love it, that will never tell you that there's a single bad thing about it, that air suspension is like God's end to making sure everything's perfect for the rest of the world. And that is kind of not true. There's there's great things about air suspension. There's the versatility. It allows you to open up different fitment options. It allows you to go up and down. It allows you to get through different raises and parking lots and things like that. It's more versatile to your driving experience. And there are some really smart management solutions out there that pretty much cater to driving and behaving how you drive your car. I mean, it's a fancy thing. It's like a computer specifically meant for your suspension, whereas the rest of the car can go figure out whatever it needs to do, like making very loud uh, brat brat noises that probably shouldn't be coming out of a 318i. On the other hand, you have coilovers, the things like Fortunato that are rebuildable spec that you can grow into, that you can upgrade, that are static fitment that allow you to dial in performance, generally speaking, a little bit easier than your air suspension counterpart. They're usually more affordable. They're more available. There's more options out there for different platforms. And of course, at the end of the day, they're just a little bit easier to get your hands on. And when you think about it, Coilovers are always a solid choice as well. What it really comes down to is, is what's the purpose of your car? What is the reason that you would put air suspension in a Miata or coilovers in a BMW? And really what it comes down to is, well, which one do you want and what are you willing to put up with? Because if you're willing to go up with the little scrapes every now and then, but you can have a static setup, go nuts. But if you're looking to have something that goes up, down, left, right, turn signal, and the other cheat code for GTA 5, then you can probably go into air suspension. Let us know in the comment section below which one you prefer, and of course, let us know what you want us to compare next. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, wheels, tire suspension, fitmentindustries.com. I'm going inside because even though it's May, it's still cold as son.